have come to the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester. This is the real genuine Stevenson's rocket. The real thing. Computer age. 1948. So, these are computer, a computer, this is rather a computer from 1948 and it's a working replica of the baby, the world's first stored program computer. The original baby ran its first program at the University of Manchester in June 1948. Within months it was enlarged to create the Manchester Mark I computer. Only a few parts survive. Members of the Computer Conservation Society built this unique replica for the 50th anniversary in 1998 using historic components. And it says iPads are about 10,000 times faster than the baby. So, it's quite a big machine. You can see how they used to take up a whole room. Here we've got a machine that made cotton from Richard Arkwright's cotton mill in 1781. That's the engine. It says it didn't drive the machines directly, instead it pumped water onto a water mill. So this is a structure of matter interactive table. It's a mouse heart. And you can zoom in and out. So George picked a mouse. Hmm. That's a good pick. And it's showing part of a mouse heart. By this exhibit it says, scientists from the University of Manchester are helping to find out what the universe is made of. They work with other physicists at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN near Geneva. Huge expensive equipment for the LHC could not be built by one organisation. Scientists from all over the world cooperated to build and use it. This is the sights and sounds of Manchester's cotton mills and they have a daily demonstration. Obviously they're not doing one now so it's all quiet. There's a lot of cotton over there. must have been very noisy when it was working, all Imagine. that machinery. Here we've got some video of the women working in the cotton mills back then. That big machinery, it must have been dangerous and noisy. This looks like a very interactive area. So this bit's called lift a mini. So you've got to turn the handle to raise and low, lower the mini. Oh, all right. So it's... You can think you can all have a go at that. Well, no, somebody else is having a go at the moment, a boy over there. So there's some weights on the back, which I guess help stop it from smashing into the floor. That helps. And it uses gears an exhibit here that's called electricity the spark of life and it's all about electricity this looks like frankenstein <laughs> early voltaic pile is there a daniel cell used by james jewell around 1840 part of a voltaic cell is in front of it also used by James Joule and here's an electromagnetic generator made by Watkins and Hill in London in 1835 here we've got a magnet electric cooker from 1935 made by the General Electric Company and it says a family in Hyde bought this electric cooker in the 1930s and used it for more than 50 years. Well, they built things to last then. 
here we've got something more modern and up to date a domestic solar battery from 2018 power cut survival kits why you'd want Frankenstein in there I don't know right as we can see the museum's made up of four war, hou war houses warehouses so there's two over there we've just come out of this one which is where the main entrance is located we've got two over there there's one over there and there's lots of cobbles although there are places where it isn't cobbled for wheelchair users okay we have come into the power hall which is you probably imagine all about power so we have a, a water wheel here from about 1820 so this is all about water power so we've got a pelton wheel a water turbine over there a hot air engine this is a Furgrove engine built about 1907 and it says powerful mill engines like this were widespread throughout northern industries. This one is a Ferranti inverted engine from about 1900. And it says that these were easier to repair because the parts are more accessible. And this steam engine that we're looking at was made for Lambeth Power Station in London. It was later sold to a mill in Chorley where it worked until 1960. And um, we've got some locomotives here. There's the little green steam chain. Planet. And over here we have Hector. There's a locomotive there that you can go and look in. It's at the steps. There is a ramped area to get to it, but it's closed off at the moment. On the whole, I would say it's very accessible here, apart from these bits of building work that are going on so that we can't get up. So we have come out of the powerhouse and we're heading towards the station building. And the 1830 warehouse is over there. <coughs> So we're in the 1830s warehouse and this bit is called Connecting Manchester. BBC Radio Manchester. Oh. There's an old record deck. Wow. Radio production. Mixing desk. This was used in BB at the BBC in Manchester to edit network radio programmes. There's a lot of editing back Proper there. Proper rotary dial telephones here. And we have a trim phone. We've got a telephone that was in blue for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. and some old mobile phones. You can see why they were called bricks, because they look like bricks. Your brick In fact, I think phone. I had one like that one on the there, number four, a brick. And then we've got some really old telephones here. That don't even have a dial and you just used to pick up to speak to the operator and the operator would put you through. So this is a public call office which were established in 1884 and the first one opened in Bristol in 1886 and for many people the call office was their first experience of using a telephone. This is a phone box from about eight, sorry, 1980 and I remember those without giving my age away I do remember those although I was a child and this bit we're looking at early paper making and the birth of books this 
is a 1977 replica of a common press. The kind of printing press used all over Europe for more than 350 years, developed in about 1454 in Germany. Here we've got a paper making machine. This is a working model of one. Oh, so that can really make paper. Yeah. This is uh, the first all-metal printing press, which was invented in Britain by the Earl of Stanhope in about 1800 and was the start of the industrialisation of printing. It's the Columbia Press, an icon of printing press design and innovation, developed in 1813. Hand-operated lithographic proof press, made in 1871. And this is a treadle press, so there's a treadle down there, made in Britain from about 1867. It's a bit windy out here at the museum. Let's say George down there. Let's say hello George. Hi um. So we've spent a few hours here at the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester. We brought our own picnic. Unfortunately for us, the only picnic area that was open was outdoors, so we were a bit chilly. We had a quick nick. <laughs> yes, it was very quick because it was a bit chilly. Um, we've looked around the three halls that were open. Oh, it's good. It's, it's mostly accessible. There's some work going on where bits are cut off, but <clears throat> normally they would be accessible, so we'll forgive them for that, won't we? That we will, yes. yes. And I have to say, the third house that we went into... Uh, warehouse, third warehouse. Third warehouse, yeah, I, uh, I, I could have stayed there for hours. That was nice and warm, that was. Very, well, very, very, just... very, tasty. very interesting because it was all the audio stuff that you were into. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. And if you don't already, please subscribe and then you'll never miss one of our weekly uploads again. Thanks again. Bye. Bye now.